So good uh, afternoon to all of you. I'm very happy that I can welcome you at this Visegrad Accelerated Talk, uh, discussing elevating Central European films at international festival and giving some kind of report how films from Central European countries are doing. And I'm very happy that here with me is Adam Schlesicki, president of Vladislav Schlesicki Film Foundation in Poland. Then Vítězslav Chovanec, Festival Relations, and who cares for Festival Relations and Documented and Short Films and Czech Film Fund and Czech Film Center, Czech Republic. Katalin Vajda, Festival Manager at National Film Institute in Hungary. And Tomáš Hudák, who cares for film promotion at Slovak Film Institute. So welcome. And uh, as I said, uh, the frame, the idea of this talk is that uh, films from Visegrad countries as, are sometimes more successful, sometimes less successful in terms of international distribution. And my question is, if this is case of these films, which are done maybe more for local audiences, or if it's the task of programmers at other festivals, which maybe are focusing on films from their directors, from directors coming from regions they are representing through their festivals, and what we can do with this. And to somehow uh, show you the scale of the situation, I would like to present you the fresh data from East-West Index. We are every year updating. So if I uh, can ask you for the first slide. And uh, yes, and East-West Index covered the information, next slide, uh, from these documentary film festivals. So you can see <coughs> that there are 14 documentary film festivals. If am I right, uh, eight are from West European countries, six are from East European countries. So we somehow tried to balance also uh, the research from this perspective. And uh, it's interesting to see <coughs> how the situation is changing from year to year, because you will see the data for last four years. In the case that the festival is just happening, was the same case for Rihlava or Doc Leipzig, for example, we use the data from previous edition. So next slide, please. <coughs> oh, and we start with uh, CPH docs from Denmark. So now I will be more like uh, specific because I'm not sure if all of you can read. So uh, the biggest part, the blue one in West European production and the red part is East European production. So you see <coughs> that uh, it's the percentage is changing from year to year, but definitely there is at least half of the films, sometimes even more than two thirds uh, coming <coughs> from films from Western Europe, and films from Eastern Europe takes just maybe less than films, for example, from Asia. So if you are a filmmaker coming from East European countries, you have less chances to have your film at CPH Docs than Asian filmmakers. Uh, what's important to say is that uh, if the film is, for example, co-production between Slovakia and Germany, we counted in this research as, as East European production. So all co-production between East and West, we count like positively to don't have even worse numbers as uh, <coughs> East European production presented at a festival. So this is, <coughs> this, is, this is CPH Docs. And let's move to other slide, another film festival. It's also interesting to see the number of film which each festival is uh, presenting. You can see it, uh, th those are the red numbers. So Doc Lisboa and CPH Docs are pretty the same, more than 200 films every year. And even here we see that uh, the production from West European countries are more or less 50% of all films. And Eastern Europe have the same space, for example, last year as South American. Yeah? In 2022, South American was much larger, but probably because of retrospectives, because otherwise we can see that, uh, for example, South American production is uh, between 8 and 12%, and the number of 
East European films is really decreasing because you see that in 2020 it was almost 30 percent, but last year it was 7 percent. Even the number of films are more or less the same. Yeah? So it's really a question why, for example, in Portugal, which is a very cinematic country, uh, is the representation of East European production so weak. So we can move to another slide moving from Portugal to Poland. And Dogs Against Gravity is one of key <coughs> uh, film festivals focusing on documentary films in Poland. It's also part of Doc Alliance. And uh, we see that every year is really a little bit different. Uh, you see that the production of Western Europe in 2024 is something like 40%, if I read it correctly. But it was the year before 62%. Uh, the the East European films are about 20 to 30 percent. And then what's great that there are also, for example, com films coming from Australia and Africa. This is something what's significant because we <coughs> even we started to do this uh, research uh, with the idea to somehow check and visualize uh, the tendencies in programming uh, in West European and Europe East European production. Uh, we also see how underrepresented are the other regions and continents. For example, African continent or even Australia, which is pretty far, and of course, it's a different scale in terms of speaking about continent. But still, you know, it's about somehow showing the diversity and also creating connections. And I have to say that one of these feedbacks uh, from this East-West Index is that festivals are also much more careful about, for example, African uh, filmmakers, and uh, we can see at other festivals as well that they care more and more to somehow bring them on the European market or in European culture context. What's really great? So we can move to another slide, another festival, <coughs> and we move from spring to autumn, Doc Leipzig, Germany. And uh, the last data from uh, last edition in 2023 shows that uh, it was in a way like regular festival in terms of number of films. Uh, two years ago, they screened 20 films less, or 25. Uh, the year after, they screened uh, 30 films more. So let's say th this festival is showing around 200 films. Of course, we know that they are not showing only documentary films, but also animation films. Uh, so they screen, for example, same as Jihlava, many, many short films. And this data is for all types of film. We didn't check if the film is documentary or animation, but we somehow show how uh, the programming team is uh, sharing the diversity of production across the world. So we can see that half of the films in last edition was coming from Western Europe, and let's say, let's say one fourth was coming from uh, Eastern Europe. So altogether, more, more than three fourths are European films. And this was also a question because, for example, when we are applying the film festivals to media, there is just a question of European films. You know, and then number of countries which are represented by those films. So if you choose few films which are, uh, which are co-produced by many countries, you can check, you know, that you have many, many countries uh, being part of selected films. And then you can screen all of the films which are coming from Europe. But that can also mean that they are from some region, not only from that country, definitely. This is something what creative media cares for. But they didn't care so much about the diversity of regions. So I think this is really important to see that even if uh, three fourths are coming uh, from European countries, only one third of these films are from Eastern Europe. But compared to other festivals. This is super great, you know, space for filmmakers from Eastern Europe. And I think that uh, Doc Leipzig is really like famous for this tendency, uh, giving a space for filmmakers from our East European countries. Next slide. <clears throat> and we have FID Marseille, another festival, same as Doc Leipzig, which is part of Doc Alliance. And uh, this is even more radical. We can see that the festival is also radical in number of films. Uh, it's more like a Cannes perspective, because Cannes Film Festival is also showing every year around 80, 90, sometimes maximum 100 films, compared to Jihlava, which is showing 350 films here, yeah? so it's completely uncomparable. Un but uh, out of these 111 films this year, 68% uh, are coming from Western Europe. So 
it's really the huge, you know, the, the huge attention goes to production of Western Europe, and then much bigger attention, for example, goes to South American films. And if I see it correctly, North America is represented in the same coverage as Eastern Europe. Uh, you know, the question is if it's fair or unfair. Of course, it's a question of cultural context, but also festivals are responsible for creating these channels, these connections between audiences. And if the, if the representation is so weak, the question is how, for example, people in France can understand the uh, situation in Eastern Europe if they don't have chance, for example, through film festivals to get more information. Let's move to another slide. And it's Jihlava Film Festival, so you see it's a little bit radical in the other way. Uh, last edition in 2023 has screened 350 films, and all, uh, is it 55%? So 55% of these films were uh, coming from Eastern Europe. Of course, that for every festival, it's true that some part of these films are national films. So of course, this is something what uh, it's blurring a little bit uh, the uh, the data, but still you can see that otherwise, uh, if it's more than 50% for films from uh, this region, and it's definitely the mission of Vihlava to give a space for films from Central and Eastern Europe, then we have 28% of films which are coming from Western Europe. So we give serious space to production of, let's say, the second half of our continent. And uh, speaking about number of films, Jihlava is the festival from those 14, which is showing the highest number of films. But as I said, same as Doc Leipzig, many, many of them are very short experimental films or short documentary films. So it's not about features. We can move to another slide. And we see Visions de Rail, a Swiss festival, also part of Doc Alliance. And uh, this edition, this spring, was uh, filled with 162 films. Half of them were coming from West European productions. Then we see that almost 20% of those films, of the other films, I mean selected films, uh, were coming from Asia. And uh, half of this was uh, related to the production of Eastern Europe. So let's say every 10th film. So if we are speaking about 160 films, 16 films were European, East European co-productions. Yeah? So 16 films uh, from this region uh, at this super important festival, which definitely has an ambition to somehow reflect the current production from all parts of the world. We can move to another slide. ITFA. ITFA, <coughs> with data of last edition, 2023, we see that ITFA is all, also almost getting to the 300 films per edition, what I think is really great, because it's important to create spaces for filmmakers to screen their films. And this is interesting, and I know that it's policy of ITFA, that they really care about covering pretty seriously all regions in the world. So uh, this type of uh, percentage you cannot find at any other festival. And it's really amazing from my perspective that they keep uh, this as one of important mark in selection process, that they don't only select films, but that they select films coming from different regions which they want to cover, what's definitely not the case of some other festivals. We can move to another slide. Krakow, definitely one of two most documentary important festivals in Poland. And we see that it's more or less the same as Sihlava, for example. Also, this festival is not only documentary, but also dedicated to animation and shorts. So we see the whole data, and almost two thirds are dedicated to uh, production from Central and Eastern Europe, and one fourth, let's say, a little bit more than 25% is coming from Western Europe. <coughs> then 6% to Asia and 6% to North America. Next slide, please. Cinema du Réal. Now we will see <coughs> pretty huge coverage also for African films, uh, mostly at 2022 edition, when they had a special profile and special retrospectives bringing many African filmmakers to Cinema du Réal. 
And it was interesting that most of them, even they're all coming from Africa, met for the first time at Paris Film Festival, at Cinema de Rail. But you can see, otherwise, Blue Sea, 69%, almost two, more than two-thirds of films are coming from Western Europe. Uh, East European production is pretty weak. It's the same as African that year or as South American. So the biggest spotlight of 2024 edition was for Western Europe and then North America. Not more regions existed really clearly in the selection of this spring's edition. Next slide, <coughs> next slide, please. <coughs> it's DocuFest, our dear festival in Kosovo. Uh, and we see that uh, it's pretty balanced. It's uh, super nice to see that again, like ITFA, that this is something that the festival is really doing uh, as their decision, that they really want somehow to divide the attention between Eastern Europe and Western Europe, and then other countries. It's pretty balanced. And even the number of films is pretty high. Uh, next slide. <coughs> Zagreb Dogs, Croatian Film Festival. You see here it's different. They screen uh, around 100 films every year. And again, giving pretty same spotlight for production from East and West. And after this, they really focused on Africa. This year, what's amazing. Let's move to another slide, and I think we are getting to the end. <coughs> it's Bell Dogs from Serbia, another festival which is screening around 100 films, but mostly focusing on production coming from Eastern Europe. Then they have one-fourth of the films being produced in Western Europe, and then little shares for other continents. And the next slide. Ah, one more, Dogs Barcelona. So <coughs> this is interesting because we see that uh, the 2023 edition was a little bit different, was more balanced than the years before, but also because in the year after this spring edition, probably there was some uh, special program related to East European countries, but they have really a picky program. They choose only 50 films, but um, more than two thirds of them are probably Spanish and coming from, uh, the rest are coming from Western Europe. Next slide. Thank you. Yes. So this is the research we did this year and I would like to thank to all my colleagues who spend many, many hours counting countries, films, you know, making marks, because it's pretty sensitive thing for all the festivals we are, which are making the selection. And I'm curious, what are your first comments? What do you think about uh, this data? Maybe we can start with you, Katalin. Does it work? Yes, yes. yes. So uh, these are surprising numbers. And um, I am very sorry that Eastern Europe is so, un so much underrepresented represented at these festivals. Uh, anyway, uh, we can see and we could see from the numbers and uh, that uh, there are countries like France where are more um, Western uh, European films. And I think these are typical countries which are more open for uh, this part of the world. Um, we have to uh, try to send the films to other countries and other festivals, of course. That's our aim and we try to do our best. Uh, we do not know in Hungary the exact recipe, the only recipe, because if we knew we had our films presented at all film festivals all over the world. But still, we have some success stories. Mm -hmm. Thank you, we'll get back to this. So, Adam, maybe you and France are the only countries which had two festivals being reflected. Uh, I mean, two Polish festivals and two French festivals. So it's really a cinematic country, we know it. So how do you uh, somehow react? What do you think about what it showed? Uh, okay, first first of all, I'm not uh, from the festival, mm -hmm. I'm not from the film in in institute, I run my own uh, foundation and we simply help uh, documentary filmmakers make their films. 
and I also uh, make the, the only in Poland co-production market, international co-production market. So I thought that, that, that I may say that my, my policy is to invite one-third from Poland, one-third from East, and one-third from the West. That's, mm -hmm. that, you know, uh, according to, 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 to numbers and to the selection selections that, that were presented. But I'm on the contrary, I think. that it, it doesn't surprise me this much, especially if we look at Krakow Film Festival, at Ichlava, at other uh, 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 festivals from, from our part, part of Europe, then it's quite natural for me that we select more our, our films and the other part selects uh, uh, more Western countries, uh, the films from, 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 from Western countries. Of course, it would be ideal to, to, to have it balanced, right? So, so, so what, what uh, ITFA does, what Doc Leipzig does uh, a little bit, that, that, that's, that's of course very nice of them <laughs> and very responsible and working for, for uh, mutual uh, understanding. Um, but it doesn't surprise me this much, mm -hmm. simply. Thank you. Tomáš, please, your uh, Slovak filmmakers are pretty famous, you know, uh, they are successful. Just a second, we'll just do the round for the beginning introduction. Uh, so is it surprise for you or not? How do you feel? Uh, is it working? Yes. Yeah. Uh, of course, it's not surprising. <laughs> Uh, we know the world we're living in. Uh, I think so. Uh, I think the problem is that uh, the festivals in the West are the big ones, and we kind of expect that expect from them to uh, to go beyond their their region and to be like really global festivals, global platforms that uh, they highlight, uh, you know, all regions of the earth. Uh, on the other hand, it's kind of normal to to show the films that connects to your audience that are from your region, that the uh, audience are, can more be in touch with the stories and, and context and everything. So uh, I think that is... Uh, there's the question if we can ask from these festivals that are from the West uh, to, to showcase so many films from other regions and why we ask them to do and not maybe us to do this. That's yeah, for me the question. I, I mean, you know, there are differences. If there is a festival screening 50% of films from that part of Europe and then having one force for films from the other part of Europe. I think it's m pretty balanced. It's what, like thinking about these thirds, yeah? one third from your country, one third from the region and the other third for the second part. But if the uh, like European representation, East European representation is the same as South American, I feel it, that it's a little bit strange. Even of course, cinematic qualities of films coming from South America are high, but still, you know, we are sharing the same continent and we are living in space called European Union, so maybe festivals are tools to get us more understanding the, the other situations and problems. Yes, of course, but uh, at the same time, if we combine the West and Eastern Europe, then uh, like the vast majority of the films are like European. And so if we think about the, these Europe as an area, then basically all the festivals are the same and or have very similar numbers. And if we add, for example, uh, North America, so we talk about Global North, it's, I don't know, like 80, 90% of the films. So that's also like, you, you suggested it, that there is really under a representation of Africa and other regions. So that is also the, the thing Mm -hmm. We need to talk about it. Sure. And even we, ha we saw great data from last year's edition of HITFA. I'm afraid that this year the situation is not, not so positive. But Vyacheslav, please, if you can give us your comment. Well, first, thank you that you are doing this research. I think it's uh, interesting to see the numbers. Um, 
For me, it's also not that much surprising, firstly, because I know the research for some time. <laughs> and also, you are doing the work, yeah? You are doing the work, so you know very well what are the responses. Yeah, I mean, um, uh, you have different types of festivals, so if there is a festival which is premier festival, they should give uh, the same chance to everyone from everywhere in the world, and they should choose only the films which shows the best quality. In, of course, you cannot measure, but... Uh, um, so for the premier festivals, I think it's, it's, it is a problem and it would be nice if they think like it, like at ITFA, that maybe the, uh, the people who are inside the member, uh, the, uh, the programming team are also coming from these parts of the world. And I know that ITFA is, uh, actually mm -hmm. hiring people so they understand the context and they have also connections so they can maybe also bring more, more films from the, from the region. So I think it is, it should be a uh, responsibility of the big festivals. But if you have a small festival or maybe not premier festival, then it's nice that uh, each festival has kind of different purpose why, why they exist. So if uh, Yihlava has uh, this purpose to uh, showcase uh, mostly films from the uh, East Europe, it's, it's fine, but somebody else can have completely different reason uh, why they are choosing, how they are choosing, so mm -hmm. yeah. It's great that you mentioned uh, to have these kind of programs related to different regions. What we know from big A festivals, which are pretty more established, and you know they're also much older than documentary film festivals, usually. So they have this programming structure that they really care for different types of regions. What's not so usual at the documentary film festivals. For example, at Ihlava, we very carefully go through submissions country by country, because then we've got the overview, for example, on Bulgarian production or Argentinian production, Vietnamese production, because if you just go through the films, not knowing the context of that country or of that region, you easily might end up with screening only French films. Because, of course, French cinema is strong, but that's probably not the mission of the festival. So, I mean, there are different ways how to somehow cover this diversity, but def definitely I think that it's needed to analyze if this is something what works or not. Uh, I mean, uh, based on your experiences, which films are successful uh, in, let's say, Western European film festivals from your countries? Because it's also the other question, you know, if those films which are successful are really those you think that are the best which were made, if they really are maybe made for Western audiences or if they are really serious and you are happy that these films are being uh, taken by programmers to being screened. Katalin, maybe you can start again. Okay, I just, I just wanted to add mm -hmm. uh, that if uh, we want to be fair to these festivals mm -hmm. that we were talking about, uh, it is true that they present less films from Eastern Europe than Western Europe, but there are less countries in Eastern Europe than in Western Europe. So the Western part is much bigger, so they take these films from more countries. I'm Just not sure if there are less countries, no? but definitely the production is smaller. But the it's question is if, if this should be the limit. But yeah, no, please go, no, go on. No, that shouldn't be the limit. So uh, yes, uh, we would be happy if all our films were very successful, of course. Uh, but uh, we had some very uh, successful titles. Uh, for example, we had a documentary, The Agent of Happiness, mm -hmm. uh, which, is, uh, which is a very interesting theme. It's about a happiness agent uh, who travels in the Bhutanese Himalayas uh, to find out about people's happiness. And this film uh, has been invited to a lot of uh, film festivals, including Sundance, Margaret Mead, um, San Francisco, Mumbai, Zurich International Film Festivals, and a lot of others. So I just wanted to show how many parts of the world. And just before I uh, left Hungary, I got the news that it's nominated for the IDA Award. So this was a very uh, successful film. And our other 
uh, feature length documentary, which uh, was a success story, is Pelican Blue. Um, Pelican Blue is uh, the first ever Hungarian animated documentary. So it's, it's an interesting combination of animation and documentary. And it is about uh, the 90s in Hungary when people already had the possibility to travel, but uh, they didn't have the money for that because it was not affordable. And by forging uh, train tickets, uh, three young men provide um, the opportunity for a whole uh, generation to experience the world. And uh, this film, I counted, was shown at a lot of film festivals. It was uh, um, in competition of 17 festivals, uh, out of competition at 19 festivals until now, but it's still traveling, and the film has won seven awards. Mm -hmm. And it was shown at big festivals, really big festivals like Hot Dogs in Toronto, ANSI, because it also was presented at animation festivals, because it, it's an uh, interesting uh, combination. It was shown in uh, Torino. It was premiered in Tallinn at the Black Nights Film Festival, so really at very different festivals. Mm -hmm. I would say that the first one, The Agent of Happiness, it's a different case because it's being shot outside of Europe, yeah? Uh, so, in a way, the conditions for viewers in Western or Eastern Europe are pretty the same. But the second animated film, it's related to your history, if am I right? Uh, to your history. It's related, not, I think, not only to our history, but the history of this part of the mm -hmm. world. Because um, it's not only Hungary that we couldn't really travel until... Uh, the 90s. But the story is based in Hungary, isn't it? Uh, the, this story is based yes. in Hungary, yes. but it has no importance. Yes. So I mean, I'm curious, uh, that's why I, I wanted to specify it, because I'm curious if you think that this story is interesting more for Western audiences, because this is something what's not so clear for them, or if it's also strong for Hungarian viewers, how you can compare this? It's very strong for Hungarian viewers, mm -hmm. because... Um, um, a lot of tickets were sold, and uh, the attendance was very high. So it was very interesting for Hungarian viewers too, but to all international viewers. So uh, the film was invited, for example, to Taiwan. So even Asian uh, people mm -hmm. understood the mm -hmm. film, and Canadian, and uh, it's going to America in the near future and it's going to London, and it's so different part of the world, even those who didn't live in um, yes. the times and the conditions where we did before 90s, they do understand it and they do like the film. Yes, and if am I right, it's also preselected for European Film Awards, so it's a... Yes, it's a yes. It success. So Adam, please, I know that you're not representing an institute, but still you have big insights in Polish production. Uh, can you share some examples of successful Polish films which were distributed this year or last year? And uh, if you see anything which is common for both of them or all of them you will mention? Sure. Uh, <coughs> I'm, I'm also a uh, uh, producer, so, so I look at this maybe a little bit differently because there are two sides of, of the coin. Festivals, but also distribution um, in TVs, in, in, in platforms, etc. And sometimes it's, it's difficult to combine these two because they're the, the, uh, one type of... It, it's, it's simplifying. I, I mean, I am simplifying, but one, one type of films are, is selected to festivals and the other type that fits the, TVs, the, fi the TV formats uh, is selected to distribution. And uh, as for, for producers, we are trying to, to deal with this, which is not so easy. <laughs> Sometimes we, we make uh, two versions. 52 version for for TVs and uh, and festival version. 
So, uh, so the question is, what is the success of the of the doc of the documentary film? Yeah, I mean, if you if can name one or two titles. So. I, yeah, I have uh, I have my uh, my research, but I just wanted to put mm -hmm. the the stress on the fact that 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 producers think about it in in terms both of festivals, and of the dis distribution. Uh, so, uh, yeah, yeah, I did this uh, a, a, a mm -hmm. quick. A uh, quick research about uh, Polish documentaries, and uh, mm, one of them that that was both at uh, festivals and also was sold to to TVs was uh, Judges uh, Under Pressure by uh, Kasper Lisowski, and it was quite a quite a political film because it was about the the, the uh, judges <laughs> under pressure <laughs> in Poland. <laughs> yeah, in Poland, yes, yes, it was about the law mm -hmm. system being destroyed by the far uh, right wing uh, mm -hmm. government during last last year. So so uh, maybe this 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 subject was. I mean, for sure, the subject was att uh, attractive both mm -hmm. both for televisions and and festivals. Uh, there were two uh, films about Ukraine uh, in the rear view by, uh, by Maciek Hamela and the Hamlet's, uh, Hamlet Syndrome by uh, Piotr Sowolski and uh, uh, Elvira Niewiera. And the f uh, the, they were successful because they were uh, finished very, very quickly after, uh, w within a year or, 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 or even quicker after the, 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 the full scale uh, invasion uh, in Ukraine started uh, but that was because the, the the Hamlet syndrome was being made for several years before before the war it it focused on the on, on the war going on then from from 2014 uh, so the the this full-scale uh, invasion was just a, um, it's uh, stupid to say it, but that was an extra fact <laughs> to, 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 to that film. On, on the other hand, in the rear view, uh, was made uh, by Maciek and his cinematographer, while Maciek was, was simply going to the, to the front line, helping people uh, evacuate, uh, or he was bringing some, some, some supplies for, for people living there. And he just made it like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it was, it, it was finished within a year, and 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 they they were su successful on the festivals. Mm. On the other hand, we had the uh, uh, pianoforte by uh, by Kuba Piątek, Jakub Piątek, which was uh, which was presenting the world of of uh, music of of of, of the shopping yes, mm -hmm. uh, concourse and, and 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 that was quite uh, uh, understandable for 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 everyone in the world and and, and there were uh, protagonists from 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 various sides of the world so uh, that was um well easy to 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 accept and to understand uh, uh Everywhere, uh, a few years before that, we had uh, "Over the Limit" by Marta Prus, which mm -hmm. was, on the other hand, on the other hand, the sport movie, which was also uh, uh, quite uh, quite uh, understandable. And I went back <laughs> more uh, ten years ago, or, and, and and even more than than ten years ago, we had a uh, that was different world in a way, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Not really, because the, the films were, you know, the films were were were, were quite quite universal, yes, and, yes, and, and we had communion. Mm -hmm. uh, we had uh, Joanna that uh, that was nominated for 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 the Oscar mm -hmm. in the same year that we had uh, our curse. There were two two Polish documentaries <laughs> in the same time nominated for the Oscar. That was funny, and uh, so. As you can see, they are different. I, I, I don't see the the the, the, the any, anything. I'm, I mean, they have things in common, but 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 it's not so. I mean, it's not so easy to name it. In, I in think my what's opinion. interesting for those films, for what connects them for me from my let's say pro programmers experience, uh, is that all of them or most of them, but I think all you mentioned are based uh, in Poland and Ukraine. That in the rare view, but other films are, you know, law, law system or uh, piano forte, like uh, 
huge uh, piano competition in Poland, uh, uh, that you somehow know how to connect uh, local topics with international language and show these topics uh, to the worldwide audience. And I think this is something what's long time tradition for Polish cinema, and it's great that you continue with this. Yes, and, and this is uh, also my favorite type of, 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 of documentaries uh, that, that I, I select on for, for my workshops, that they are uh, protagonist uh, oriented. <laughs> we we uh, very often we follow a person, some people, but, but, but it's, uh, some people sometimes say it's like fiction, which I don't know if it's uh, nice or not <laughs> but but uh it's not the, the 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 television kind of of movie the the uh publicistic kind of movie it just mm -hmm. it, it just uh focused on the protagonists and that's really quite a, a long long tradition in poland of making such movies which don't necessarily fit in the distribution uh in the tvs in platforms but they, they fit into festivals. Yes, and what I think it's really interesting that you really found a way how to translate your local political problems to much wider international audiences. So what's the situation, Tomáš, in Slovakia? We know that Slovakia is the same South country as Denmark and pretty same successful in terms of sharing documentary films worldwide. So probably the two biggest names these years in uh, for the documentary cinema is Peter Kerkež and Vera Čakanyova. Uh, this year Peter Kerkež has a film in Venice called uh, Wishing on a Star. It played also here in Ihlava. Uh, it's a big international co-production of I believe five or six countries and the uh, main producer and basically the story takes place in Italy uh, which maybe helped uh, for Venice selection. Uh, it has Italian co-producer as well, yes. yeah? Yes, not the main producer mm. from Italy. Uh, but Peter Kerkesh, uh, for quite some time, he, he was going more and more international and obviously has, uh, let's say, a very specific uh, uh, style of uh, making films which uh, could be appealing for the big festivals. And uh, Vera Čakaneva is like a very unique person uh, and filmmaker. Uh, her, la her last film, Nose from Eremosin, premiered in Berlin and uh, screened all over the world. Uh, sh her films are more going towards experimental films. Uh, she's dealing with the with the internet and avatars and blockchain and and post centric world, uh, which is definitely something uh, that the philosophy and like our our, uh, our oh, let's say philosophy is uh, very interested in this um, last couple of years and maybe yeah. maybe decades, uh, but. Again, the, and these are, as Adam kind of mentioned, like what is the success of uh, of the films, and uh, again, these are the filmmakers and films that are uh, big because they play films in uh, Western European festivals. But for example, I also re reminded me of uh, filmmaker Pavel Barabash, uh, who is making mostly like mountaineering films. And then he has lots, lots of awards. He travel a lot to the festivals. It's like super popular. Uh, but you know, these are kind of films that uh, goes under the radar. And if we are talking about uh, places like this, uh, because these are not the this type of films and that goes to these big festivals. To yeah. We will whatever. talk these so unsuccessful this films in the next round. So <laughs> but uh, if, if you somehow uh, can try to summarize if the Slovakia case, for example, is close to a Polish case, so that you are bringing Slovak topics outside of uh, Slovakia, 
or because you mentioned uh, notes on Eremosin and Frem and other films by Vera Čekáňová, which are more related to non-Slovakian issues, even we can find some traces related to Slovakia, and Wishing on a Star is definitely not Slovak uh, film in terms of topic and, you know, the background. Uh, of course, it's done by a great Slovak filmmaker. So do you think that Slovak filmmakers are using the same way how to be successful, focusing on local topics, or they go outside of Slovakia to show something which is more close, which is closer to Western audiences, for example? Mm, it's very difficult to, to generalize like, like that. Um, but I would like to also mention, because it should be said that mm, not all films are intended for international audience, and it's totally okay. It just we're talking just the fragments of, uh, of like a whole production country. Uh, I think uh, our filmmakers are focusing more on like local topics, and there are, s with some exceptions. Another exception is, for example, uh, The Sailor by Lucia Kashova, which uh, played in Hot Dogs, uh, which is say, uh, ba uh, set in the Caribbean. But m I believe mostly Slovak fil filmmakers uh, focus on our, um, our themes, uh, our protagonists. One of them is, for example, uh, Lines by Barbara Slepkova, which won Ihlava two or three years ago. Uh, it's basically an urban symphony of Bratislava. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah if we, for it. example, go deeper in this year's program, mm -hmm. we see that there is Mrs. President, Mrs. President, which is really like local topic, but shown to wider audiences and also yes. the gray zone, which is in yes. the first light section. It's Slovak film in terms of what, what it speaks about, but then Wishing on a Star, for example, and other films are more like uh, universal in terms of the spirit. So maybe I would say that Slovakia is pretty successful in doing it both ways, yeah? that you found a way how to somehow um, adapt the film language to the topics which are not uh, originally based in Slovakia, but also that you can show Slovak questions and Slovak topics uh, to wider audience, like, for example, a film like Mrs. President. And I think it's also a generational thing, that mm -hmm. younger generation tend to focus on other topics that are relating to not only Slovakia or are really set in different countries or even continents. There are multiple films in production and post-production now that are uh, that really hope will be successful. They have like very strong uh, themes and language, and uh, they are like based really in in Romania, in Mongolia, and really, really mm -hmm. different various countries. Great. Thank you. And Vítězslav, please, what do you think about Czech contemporary documentary scene? Is it successful or not? Which films uh, were screened outside of Czech Republic? Well, uh, a lot of the Czech films are also Slovak films at the same time, so I can relate also on what Tomáš has said. Um, but um, I think for, for a long time the documentaries were actually doing better than fiction, for example, uh, from the Czech production. Now I think also the fiction is, is uh, starting to be at the big festivals. Um, as we are a small country, I think there is, there is usually one festival hit or two of them per year, which is probably reasonable Can you name number. Some? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for example, this year I would say the um, most, um, if I say something else than <laughs> Tomáš, I think that uh, I'm not everything I want to be by Clara Tasovska. It's a very successful film. It started in Berlinale. And um, I'm, I, I wouldn't personally search if, uh, in, in the topic if the film is successful or not, because any topic can, mm. can be made universally so everyone understands that, and then you can show the film easily everywhere, or you can make it very local and uh, nobody will understand just behind the borders. So, for example, this is film about a photographer, which s itself sounds more like a TV style film, and then it's it's made it's based only on photographs and her voiceover, which doesn't even sound sexy for a feature movie. This is only this, but surprisingly enough, it's really it's really a great movie, and it's uh, it's traveling a lot because there is something 
universal, and it's it's her personal story, so it's it's very very human actually inside. So and it's well done as well. It's well yeah. done. Yes, yes, yes. So yeah, but uh, what is interesting about the topics actually uh, that uh, there is a lot of documentaries, uh, Czech documentaries, which are happening outside, uh, mm -hmm. and it's already like for some time. I don't know if I can recall, for example, Solo by Artemio Benki was in Argentina. Uh, World Between Us is in New York, also partly in Czech Republic, for example. The Limits of Europe, uh, again, it's around Europe. So, I mean, uh, this is happening quite often, that we go and find topics outside the borders. I'm not sure uh, why it is uh, um, happening that often. But um, I believe that actually why the film is successful is more... Uh, if it is universal, but also if you promote it during uh, during the making. So I think that all the films which are really working the best on the festivals were already pitched at some big festivals in some big uh, co-production forums. And if they would emerge just out of nothing as a random submission, maybe it would be way harder for them. Also, when you are represented by a good sales agent, it helps a lot. So it, there is so many things. It's definitely not just the topic. Yeah. Definitely, there is a work which is needed to be done uh, behind. And uh, so, mm -hmm. uh, I would like to, to, yeah. to add one thing. I didn't say about one uh, more thing, which was called the pawn shop, uh, which was very local. <laughs> and mm -hmm. it, it was extremely uh, uh, popular in Poland. I don't know how uh, about festivals. It was traveling around the, the world, but most uh, prizes, it, were won in Poland, uh, and it the the the, the film uh, reminded me about one thing that most of the films have in common: they are made by people uh, by newcomers. The, they, they were first, most of them, they were first or second films mm -hmm. uh, by uh, by so by by debutants who were working hard on their films for years traveling uh, around, on, uh, I, I, I am trying to help them with, uh, in, in these contacts with, with, with uh, other uh, pitching forums and, and, and workshops. And uh, these people just work on, on, on their films to the very end, but that touches the, the thing that I would like maybe to talk later about uh, uh, making and producing documentaries and about money, because this is the, 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 the most important subject, uh, if we have money to do it or not. But so I just wanted to, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to say that debutants is the, is the, is the common thing for, for, for these films. Yes, that's true. Fresh air. Can I just add two more Hungarian films, mm -hmm. which are very interesting. They are on sports theme. Mm -hmm. One is Conquering Time, and it's about Agnes Keleti. Uh, she is 103 years old now, and she is a five-time Olympic championship. Mm -hmm. And it's about her story. Uh, that uh, she defeated both her rivals and uh, the existential threats to a Jew living through the turmoil of the uh, 20th century. And what is very interesting that this is a Hungarian-Israeli co-production because she was living in Israel. She's mm -hmm. back in Hungary now, but uh, she used to live there for mm -hmm. a time. And um, it was a great success uh, all over the world and was presented at several festivals. And the other one is Golden Legends, which is about the Hungarian water polo team, mm -hmm. which between 1996 and 2008 uh, were, were Olympicans, uh, Olympic champions in three consecutive years which is, I think, unique. It didn't ever happen to any other water polo team. And it's about their success, and the film was so successful, both in Hungary and abroad, that now the filmmakers decided to make a series, a TV mm -hmm. series of it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And now let's move maybe to those films which are not so lucky. And I would like to ask you if you can name one film and really like make it more like uh, sh uh, give us some details about the film because probably we don't know the film because it was not so successful. But uh, if you can say why 
if it's as what you mentioned them, if the problem is with money or if the problem is in the language or it's just bad luck because at the market at the same time were similar film, for example, with the same topic or what are the reasons that some films which are promising and maybe are also part of pitching forums done by debutants has some kind of idea are at the end not so successful. So maybe Katalin, if you can start again uh, thinking about some Hungarian example for this unfortune. Uh, I wouldn't like to uh, tell any titles. <laughs> but, but please, <laughs> <laughs> because otherwise, you know, it's a, some kind of case study also for filmmakers to really but see. Maybe it's not necessary to name the title, but really just to be specific in the you know reasons why this happened. Usually the reasons are that the topic is so Hungarian that uh, people don't really understand it in other countries. I see, but there, is there any film which had this ambition, you know, were not only local, but didn't succeed? If you can think, because you as a, re a representative of a National Film Institution, you have this type of experience and feedback also from other programmers or other film institutes, critics, so you know maybe, of course you, we can say that it's too local, but I think there are more maybe reasons behind this unsuccessful ones? You can never know what the reasons mm -hmm. are why the films uh, are not so successful mm -hmm. because if we knew it, there were only successful films. Uh, but it happened to some Hungarian films, even about some other sports legends because I was speaking about the success of uh, some sports films. It happened even to other films about Olympic winners. So the theme was almost the same. It was, of course, made in a different way with different people, and the film was not so successful internationally. Maybe the way it was made was not that festivals would like to present. Mm -hmm. And do you think it's more a question of film language which is used, that it's not so contemporary, or that it's a, it's a problem of context, that the film is not bringing the context which international audience needs? Both, I think. Both about the film language it was made, uh, it was uh, both the context, maybe the person who is a contemporary person does not have such successes as earlier and the person herself or himself is not so important or not so interesting for people uh, as it was when probably the they began to shoot the film. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Adam, you mentioned money. Is only <laughs> money problem behind all our unsuccesses or how would you go deeper in this idea um, you had? Uh, in my eyes, uh, the problem uh, for the unsuccessful films is the um, overproduction of documentaries around the world. That, uh, so many of them that you have, but that you nearly, that you really need the money, but also contacts and uh, ideas to promote them, to get to right people. So the the the, uh, the workshops, the pitching forums are are one of them. So you have to travel, you have to. Uh, let the festival uh, selectors know before the, the film is finished. Uh, it's great to have a sales agent before that. Um, I mean, before you start sending them to to, to the festivals. And uh, but still, is there any film which had all these, you know, help behind, but still didn't succeed in past years? And you said, I am surprised that this film is not running at festivals. Plenty of them. <laughs> uh, Every year I meet uh, around, I don't know, 50 filmmakers at my workshops, mm -hmm. 30, over 30, 30 to 40 projects. <laughs> so, and, 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 and this, this year we have the 10th uh, uh, anniversary of, of, of our foundation. So there were really, you know, hundreds of, of projects. Mm -hmm. And um, so again, I, uh, uh, it's difficult to name one of them, but 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 there are many uh, uh, films that that didn't succeed because of this abundance of of of, of films worldwide. 
Um, and what do you think that, like, for example, West European filmmakers have and we don't have? Is it an experience? Is it some kind of, you know, dedication or it's just bad luck? Uh, they are more lucky, they have... Maybe you know, they, they know uh, better how to, how to fit into special... Um, special patterns, special, you know, the, the, the requirements. Some of the films very interesting for me were uh, somewhere in between the subjects, f uh, sticking to the, to, to, to the sport uh, background. Uh, some of them, I mean, uh, the, 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 there was a film that was uh, too little sporty for the sports festivals. <laughs> <laughs> there was too much sport in it for the, for, for 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 general festivals, with some some stories mixing there, and uh, and it was fascinating for me, but and for some other people, but maybe it was difficult, you know, to classify it, to 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 to, to select it because it was this, mm -hmm. yeah, it was this mixture of this, and it's also. Um, uh, as you said the compliment about the Polish way of making films, which s sometimes helps, but also sometimes doesn't help. Yeah, it's a huge country, huge competition. So, so, but so, maybe yeah. I would also like to ask: you can compare uh, support for film institutes because you are part of not in your case, but in your cases you are part of film institutes. Do you think that the conditions you have are similar compared to, for example, Nordic countries, West European countries, or like? Portugal, for example, or this is also part of the story that the infrastructure behind the films is not so strong uh, and it's a little bit more shaky and this has an influence on uh, then the distribution of films or this is not the case because the films are those who are making the success. Uh, Tomáš. Uh, I don't think uh, we... Uh, Okay, um, I really don't know like what are the conditions in Nordic countries, but I can imagine uh, quite better. Uh, I would say even in Czech Republic and or Poland, uh, the um, situation is uh, much much better in terms of institutional uh, help for the for the films. Uh, I'm, I don't know much about Hungary, so but it's quite possible that it's also the case. Uh, but if if I go back to the previous question, I from uh, I will again follow what Adam suggested, and uh, this overproduction. And if we're talking about um, films that weren't that were not that maybe that successful, uh, there were multiple films that because. Okay, it's one thing to, to talk about, like, uh, if films has some ambitions and, okay, it didn't work out somehow because uh, there are different reasons. But there were m multiple films that uh, premiered in good festivals and then didn't really travel that much. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's because of the overproduction or... Oh, okay, 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 let's say overproduction. Uh, there's another nice word, but uh, whatever. Um, and then uh, it's difficult to say what are the reasons. Uh, maybe the lack of support or not that strong support from if they don't find the sales because there are only limited number of sales and they take limited number of films. Uh, institutional power, maybe we could do better in Slovak Film Institute or I don't know. Uh, let's be real. Producers uh, often focus on producing films, not that much on distributing them. There are reasons for that, uh, mostly funding because uh, because um, distribution and especially international distribution are not uh, supported as strongly. They need to produce films in order to earn a living. That's the reality. Uh, yeah, and then there's also the question when we, when you were pro, uh, presenting uh, the index, I was thinking like, okay, there are uh, the small percentage of the films come from Eastern Europe, and I was wondering like, uh, what are those films? Is it possible that there are like 
10 international hits that plays like all of the festivals and these are the, the films that make these numbers or are those like really variety of films that tell different stories from different regions uh, in, because also Eastern Europe there are like multiple regions actually. Uh, and then there are also other extreme, we just, just mentioned that uh, film plays in one really big festival and then just a couple of really small festivals didn't really find a, an attraction. Yeah, but I think uh, you, you're right that uh, promotion part is important part of this because of course even at festivals are many films being screened and it's different if filmmakers have money for example from for press person who can help doing the press and maybe for some promotion. So we just love, what do you think about this? And if the situation, for example, in the Czech Film Fund, the Czech Film Center is changing because you know that if you want to be successful, you as an institution uh, needs to help much more to have success at the end. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say that, uh, for example, even Poland probably has a little bit better resources, but wherever I go, I see that they have, uh, they can throw a happy hour, or I don't know, they are like a, more active in this way. We, we don't have really budget to, to do this kind of stuff, but uh, at the same. <laughs> okay. Uh, but, um, so I don't know, but uh, it, it, then it, uh, it, it, then you do something else maybe, like uh, we are trying, because part of the wor uh, work is uh, going inside the Czech Republic, so uh, we collect all the information about the films. Maybe we also give some consultation to some people who ask, like, uh, what, what festivals should I try or how, how it's even working? Uh, or we try to help them uh, to maybe send uh, the film to the festival. So uh, you can help multiple ways, which is not costing you any real money, it's just the work. And uh, there is five people of us. I think it's similar with the Slovak Film Institute. So, of course, if you have bigger institution, you can do more work, but you have also bigger countries with more production. So, um, what I see is that, uh, for example, Spain has also regions. So they often are also represented by different institutions. Uh, so, I, I don't see this, uh, this, that this would be a problem because I think that for a documentary, the institutional landscape is kind of okay. Uh, there is uh, industry at the Hlava Film Festival, there is Isdok platform, we have Doc Incubator. Uh, I mean, we are kind of lucky mm -hmm. what we have, actually, not everybody, not every country in uh, East Europe has uh, such an institutional support. So, this is good. Um, uh, regarding the, the films, I, I, now I cannot really recall which film I would say was unsuccessful. Like they do have expectations which at the end were not fulfilled. I think that almost everyone has expectations and then you know, <laughs> they have to find out that it didn't work. <laughs> but it's different when it's the filmmaker, but you, you know, somehow can predict. Uh, and you are meeting a lot of programmers, yeah? You, wrote, you do the screenings for them, so you also know the immediate reactions, how they react on those films and what they comment. So. Mm. Yeah, then you have also some festivals have come some kind of uh, lineup, some style. So, for example, uh, the one which was very radical for Western European production, um, uh, either Cinema Durel or, or Fit Marseille, they, they choose a lot of uh, films which are not in, even made, I think, uh, this type of production mm -hmm. in, uh, in Czech Republic. Maybe there is not enough support for, for that, or, or I don't know, maybe there is not the tradition. So. Uh, uh, when you see the movie and you see uh, the lineup of the festival, you kind of know, okay, this, this is uh, ways to, uh, to try, or, uh, or you, are like, uh, you are also like um, trying to explain that, okay, you will also spend some money on the distribution, it's better to think wisely than uh, trying everything. But it's okay, I mean, everybody wants to try Berlin Alice, and sometimes it's just because they would feel bad that they didn't, didn't try, what if? <laughs> That is true, um, the Czech Republic has uh, many opportunities or gives many opportunities to filmmakers how to somehow place mm -hmm. their film and maybe get feedback, but at the end we don't see so many results, so it's a paradox in a way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and but it, even though sometimes it's a surprise, um, will, will you remember the title Dagmar Smržová documentary was in Hot Dogs? Mm -hmm. that, that was kind of surprising, I think, because I didn't expect that uh, for that festival. But then I think also, like, again, 
after that festival, it didn't work that much, but surprisingly, it got this selection. So sometimes it surprises you, of course. We, like, I cannot know everything, otherwise I could be selecting the films for them <laughs> uh, and doing their work. But um, mm, I think, for example, from this year program, The World Between Us, I think I expected a little bit um, better because I know that some big festivals uh, didn't uh, uh, take the film into their program. And Maria Dvořáková is very talented. She, she received the student Oscar uh, in 2016 or 17. Uh, so there was expectations about the, around this film. And um, I mean, still, it's, it's in Ihlava, so it didn't. Yeah, let, let's see <laughs> how the bad. film will, will be doing after the <laughs> but, premiere. Yeah, yeah, but some festivals which, uh, which they tried uh, before uh, didn't work out. So I know that they had these expectations. And um, I'm not really sure what is the reason, but maybe it is that. Um, now there is uh, so many things going on in the world, like there is war in, uh, in Gaza, in Ukraine, uh, so many hard topics, and then there is a movie about someone who succeeds in New York, so, you know, it's like... But I think if you mention this film, I think it might be hard, because after premiere of I'm Not Who I Wanted to Be in February in Berlin, having from the same country another film about photographer, female yeah. photographer, yeah. that it's might be tricky, but maybe Yehlava is eight months after Berlinale, maybe it's a good time gap to create new identity for yeah. this film. Yeah? But of course, these are the situations which this overlapping of topics uh, sometimes exactly. are really making the changes in the perception of films. This is also interesting that sometimes films are coming in tandems. I don't know why. Not always from the same country, but uh, yeah. Because documentary reflects what's in the air, yeah, but sometimes it has this influence. What, Katarin, we wanted to comment on As this. As I also represent a film institute, I just wanted to add that we at the um, National Film Institute Hungary also support uh, documentaries. Uh, it's a kind of a, a non refundable support, of course. Uh, and uh, we give money for pre-production, production, and for the films that are coming out in theaters. Um, also, uh, distribution, for the distribution. And we have them with the festivals and uh, even the sales. Mm -hmm. And we try to help other uh, documentaries that are meant for television or do not come out in cinemas. But there are so many that, of course, not all of them. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, this is one thing. And the other thing about uh, uh, the there are so many productions and about the overproduction that I spoke to one of the leaders of one of the biggest film festivals all over the world who told me that every year for the main sh sections, they get around 2,000 entries per section. Yes. And they present 10, 12, 15 films. So it's almost 200 times more than they can present. So there should be something in the film uh, why they select just that film and not the other one. I have to say I'm surprised. Uh afraid when the word uh, under uh, overproduction is being used because this higher production i think reflects the position of uh, documentary and of you know films in general there was a big change in past decade through digitalization and we wanted to learn uh, people to use cameras and edit films so this is the outcome that people are making films and maybe we have to adapt our industries and we have to adapt our distribution channels to this new situation because if, if we want to limit it I would say that it would not have a good benefits yeah, to come back to some kind of elite way of production so I think it's a new era, it's a digital era, and this is just part of these changes that there are many more films and also many more festivals and many more channels and streamers and, you know, social networks. And it's just a question how we can learn to distribute these films because maybe the old way we were all used to uh, are not enough for placing all these new films. Uh, but uh, because we are at the end, uh, I maybe will recall what Vyacheslav said, that sometimes you are surprised. So I hope that uh, all of us will be uh, surprised every year, and maybe that this surprise will be somehow transformed into something what's normality, that this is something that we are uh, very naturally 
represented, I mean, we, like your countries, uh, through films at festivals in Western Europe, Eastern Europe, or worldwide. So thank you very much for being here. If you have any questions, I think uh, it's a good to meet us just after we are here and we can answer your questions. And I would, be, I would like to uh, thanks a lot to my dear uh, guests and colleagues uh, for this talk. So Katalin Vajda, Vítězslav Chovanec, Adam Šlesický, and Tomáš Hudák, yes, Tomáš Hudák were now here with me. Thank you for being here with us, and I would like to thank the International Visegrad Fund, who is a partner of the festival, and giving us support for think about our problems in bigger spectrum, bigger space, bigger frame, for example, also in this Visegrad context. Thank you very much.